In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at shapes of molecules. And what I'm going to be looking at specifically is how you can how you, what um how you can interpret the the information given from um from from after you working out the number of lone pairs and bonding pairs, and then using that information to to work out the shape of the molecule. So I'm going to go through uh, several examples, each of which have slightly different properties. And I'm going to be talking you through uh, some of the reasoning behind how you um, deduce the shape of that molecule. So the first two examples here I have are BeCl2 and CO2. And the first thing you might notice from looking at this is that both of these central atoms have only two other atoms uh, bonded to it. And these particular ones are ones which we could class as having uh, two bonded pairs. Uh, let me, two bonded pairs and no lone pairs. Now, CO2, if we were to draw out the structure of this, it looks something like this. So we have carbons and it's double bonded to oxygens on either side. So you might be thinking, wait a second, aren't there four bonded pairs? And the answer would be, yeah, there are four bonded pairs. But when we're looking at the shape of this molecule, we can look at it as if we only have uh, two bonded pairs since these are going to go in the same direction. The double bond is going to like stay together in that particular direction. So this is going to have the same shape as BeCl2, which if I draw this out, is going to be have the Be, wait, so Be in the middle, and then it's going to have the Cl and the Cl. And you may have noticed here that all of the, this is all going in one plane. As you can see, it's all going in one plane. And if I was to draw a line from the chlorine to the other chlorine, and if I was to draw a line from the O to the other O, the line is basically a straight line. And so the name we give to these two molecules in terms of their shape is linear, linear, linear. And the angle between the bond angles, the basically this angle is 180 degrees. And so the same, it's the same for this as well, 180 degrees. And so that's what it would be if we had two bonded pairs and no lone pairs. So now let's take a look at an example which involves uh, free, free electron pairs. And this particular example contains uh, free bonded pairs and um, no lone pairs. So free bonded pairs and no lone pairs. I'll take a little look at what would happen if we had two bonded pairs and one lone pair, but I'll do that after I've done this. So barium, I mean boron, boron trifluoride. Boron trifluoride has uh, three bonded pairs and zero lone pairs. So if we were to draw the structure out, it would look something like this. So we'd have the boron in the middle. I'll draw this actually, I'll draw this closer to this. Uh, we have the boron in the middle and then we'd have a fluorine here. We'd have a fluorine here and we'd have a fluorine here. And as you can see, these fluorines are all repelling each other. All of these bonded pairs are repelling each other. And for maximum separation in terms of repulsion, what they do is they do all of this repulsion in one plane. So when, when we have these two free bonded, <coughs> free bonded pairs, the repulsion tends to happen in one plane. So it's like along the plane of the paper. It doesn't go in and it doesn't go towards you. It's just like along the plane of the paper. And the angles between this, if you were to imagine that this was like a circle. So here's my crudely drawn circle. <clears throat> if you imagine, if you were to imagine that this is a circle, what you'd find is that the uh, angles are basically 360, which is the angle, the total angle in the circle, 360 degrees, divided by three, which is 120 degrees. So as you can see, if we had looked at this angle here, this angle here, this angle here, this would be 120 degrees. Now, if we were to now uh, think to ourselves, okay, what is the name of this uh, shape of this molecule? Well, the way we name this is we actually look at one of the characteristics 
well, actually two of the characteristics. The first, the first characteristic we look at is the shape of it. And if we were to join the fluorine atoms, right, we notice that it forms a triangle. And in chemistry, when we're looking at um, molecular geometry, molecular geometry, and this is just a, like a fancy name for shapes of molecules, shapes of molecules. Uh, this shape, this particular characteristic, the way that it resembles a triangle, we use the word trigonal, trigonal, to say that it resembles the shape of a triangle. And the name we give this shape is trigonal, and we also look at the characteristic that, so the first part of the name, as I said, is tri, trigonal. So let me just write that down first. Tri, this is a light color, so I won't, I won't use this color. Tri, trigonal. And then we look at the fact that this shape is all in one plane. It doesn't go into the paper and it doesn't come towards you. Since it's all in one plane, um, we say that it's planar, planar. Since it all it's all in one plane. So we, the name we give it, the total name, the, the complete name we say is trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. So this is the name we would give to this particular uh Molecule, molecular shape when we have three bonded pairs and zero lone pairs. Now let's take a quick look at what would happen if we had uh, if we had three bonded uh, no two bonded pairs. So we had three 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 electron pairs in total, three electron pairs in total. But we had two bonded pairs and one lone pair, and this one this particular molecule i'll just represent it algebraically so x will be the central atom x is the central atom and it's got two lone pairs so lone pairs and it's got two bonded pairs so let's just say it's bonded to molecule y which is some mystery i mean bonded to atom y which is some mystery atom so it's got two lone pairs and it's got um two bonded pairs now looking back thinking back to uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory the whole um, you know the fact that lone pairs repel the, repel the most lone pairs and bonded pairs repel second most and bonded pairs bonded pairs repel the least looking at this particular structure we have a lone pair and um, what this lone pair is going to do is it's going to repel this bonded pair this way and it's going to repel this bonded pair this way and since the lone pair bonded pair repulsion is stronger than the uh, bonded pair bonded pair repulsion what's going to happen is this particular angle is going to be slightly smaller than you'd expect in this molecule because looking at this this is pretty much like very similar to this except one of these bonded pairs is has been replaced by a lone pair and what happens is this 120 degree angle is shrinks a little bit it's sort of squashed together and so this angle is going to be somewhere slightly less than so this is a less than sign, less than 120 degrees. It's not going to be exactly 120, but it's going to be slightly less because of this lone pair. So, okay, let's move on from that. And, it, and the shape of this molecule, the shape of this molecule, looking at it, it's in one plane and it's similar to this structure up here in the sense that it's one um, atom bonded to two atoms and it's in one plane, except when I say one plane, I mean like two dimensional, but the problem with this is that it's bent and it's not in a line if we, if i was to draw join this through the x uh with let me choose another pen it's not a line it's like a little bendy upside down v and so the name we give this is non-linear non-linear and we're going to be coming across non-linear a second time in this video uh for uh, a structure which has uh, more lone pairs but for now, yeah, this is going to be non-linear. So now let's move on to if we had, rather than just three electron pairs, let's take a look at what would happen if we had four electron pairs. So four electron pairs, four electron pairs. Now for these, both of these molecules, we have four electron pairs bonded to the central atom. And if we look at this, this is methane methane it's a simple hydrocarbon molecule and this is an ammonium ion ammonium ion 
and this I don't think I made that space big enough ammonium ion and this is what is formed when an ammonia NH3 accepts a proton so it accepts a H plus ion and yeah I'll be going into ammonia after because it's got a special shape but for now let's look focus on ammonium ion the ammonium ion so let's look actually let's focus on methane first it's, it's, it's kind of first in the line so methane right when it comes to methane and we've got these uh four we've got these four electron pairs what happens four bonded pairs which are from the four electron pairs what happens is the 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 um repulsion takes on a new uh it takes on a new style so to speak and the way it does this is it becomes a three-dimensional form of repulsion so not only does it re re form repulsions in just one plane anymore no 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 the the molecule is tired of that it knows that if if we form it in three dimensions we can maximize those angles between the different uh bonded uh, atoms uh, between different bonded pairs and so the shape the, the way this is shaped is um and i'll show draw this now uh actually what i want to draw first is a model of what it could look like if if it was in one plane so imagine if this was in one plane and after that we'll compare it and see which one is better so first of all let's look at this carbon and it's bonded to a hydrogen it's bonded to a hydrogen it's bonded to a hydrogen and it's bonded to a hydrogen okay this is in one plane now and look at these angles these are all of the angles and they're all equal and all of these angles are 90 degrees and yeah all of these are 90 degree angles uh, the thing is this 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 molecule can do better than 90 degrees and so what this molecule does is it forms a three-dimensional structure and let me just draw this three-dimensional structure now so the three-dimensional structure it draws looks something like this so we have a carbon and it's bonded to a hydrogen up here and it's bonded to a hydrogen here and what's happened down what happens around here is that it bonds to a uh, it forms a, a, a wedge uh, a wedge bond so this bond is pointing towards you and this another bond which is pointing away from you so yeah uh, actually let me do it like this so I think it looks better if I do this so you have the H here and then the H yeah I guess that looks better then we have the H here. So this is the structure of methane. So these two are pointing sort of, this one's pointing on a plane of paper. This is towards you and this is away from you. So this is what methane actually does in its 3D shape that it forms, rather than forming this kind of simplistic uh, one plane shape. And the reason why it does this is if we actually take a look at these angles between the different atoms, it's greater than a 90 degree angle we had before. So the, the the repulsion in this one is maximized much more than this one so this is why we don't use we don't use this so yeah let me just yeah goodbye so what we do in this one is we have angles which are actually 109.5 one own one 109.5 degrees and this is the angle somewhere between like 120 and 90 degrees like so this is like a a more optimal angle than that one and this is the angle which which this particular structure has and if we take a look at the ammonium ion a similar very similar thing happens so it repel, repels in all those different directions so we have the nitrogen here and what I'll do is I'll represent the dative covalent bond so this is a dative covalent bond to the H plus ion I don't think I need the you know yeah that's fine so hydrogen uh, hydrogen these are the legit bonds which are Okay, they're all legit points, but yeah. Hydrogen. And all of these angles are the same as the ones on the methane. All of these angles are going to be 109.5 degrees. 109.5 degrees. The reason why it's this angle, I don't know, but this is like the maximum. This is basically the, the, the max repulsion 
the ma the ma the optimum angles you can get when you're in three dimensional repulsion mode, which this is in. And so all of these angles also would be nine uh, one or nine point five degrees. And the way the way we name this, the way we name this is we take a look at the different, uh, we, we basically look at what shape is formed when we join up the hydrogen atoms. So if I join this up, so join up that with that, and that, and that, and that, and we form a triangular based pyramid, so like that, and I guess this would be a dotted line. And so that would go up there. If we look at the number of faces, uh, we could look at the number of faces, or we could look at the number of edges. We've got one, two, uh, back there we've got three and we've got four. And if we look again at the number of edges, one, two, three, four. Now, the, the, one of the words used in the molecular um, geometry when we're looking at um, the, 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 the shapes of molecules, the word we use to describe this sort of uh, tendency to have four, four is uh, tetra, tetra. Tetra is one of those words used to describe the idea of having four, and we say that it's tetrahedral. So, like coming from the word tetrahedron, which is like I think it's this the name the name of this shape. This is a tetrahedron. So, tetrahedral is the word we use to describe the shape of these molecules. Tetrahedral. And the angles are one hundred nine point five. So now let's look at ammonia.